Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast. As always, I'm your host, Matt. With me tonight, I have the front man himself, D. White. That's right. Hey, has there ever been a better weekend of wrestling than this past weekend? Ah, yes. Yes, but this was a good one. I I actually really enjoyed this weekend. Uh, And of course, God, if his wife wasn't so incredible, I'd call him my life partner. I think it's Cod Sinclair. Actually, it might be Ryan Alvarez tonight. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. You know, I I think in an alternate universe, uh, we hook up. I'd buy it. Yeah. Multiverse See, of Madness, yeah. guys. There you yes, go. Listen, I, I, I love for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. If Sarah ever passes, I think the brother husband thing works both ways. There. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Next Put- next next up. <laughs> Next, put that, put next that next crap time. put that crap on the Patreon. Good gosh, man. Get a room. Um you Sha- mean, you mean the Shaz McKenzie fans? over here. Yeah, people are gonna pay for fans. that. Uh <laughs> all right, guys. We are here and we're talking about slam anniversary this weekend on Saturday. We're talking money in the bank last night. There's some stuff happening currently on Monday Night Raw. If anything big happens and ESPN sends me a notification, we'll talk about it. We talk about it. Cena's currently cutting a promo, um, and says Roman is still not over, which is funny. Long he- gone, um, because he's already challenged wrote Roman to the Universal Title match at SummerSlam, and we moved on to the six man tag match, which is ever so fun. Um, yeah, between the Viking Experience and Riddle taking on a- AJ Styles, Omos. And Jomo. Oh, let's talk Slam Anniversary. <laughs> yeah, let's God, please, let's do the Slam better of the two fantastic. shows, in my personal opinion. Um, so yeah, Slam Anniversary, I think, was the best show this past weekend. But they they have the benefit of a number of surprises happening. Very small crowd for Impact's first show back, um, but it kind of worked. I was kind of mm-hmm. down for it. Loved it. Um, on the pre-show. The team of Havoc and Rosemary take the titles off of Fire and Flava. So, uh, Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles lose the belt. Um, kind of surprised I got this one wrong here because I feel like Death Taxes, Fire and Flava as tag champs. Yeah, and I think it was after the fact that we learned that um, one of the members of Fire and Flava's contract is about to expire here shortly. So, that might be the cause for it, but... Um, you know, you're 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 putting the titles on a heel team. You know that gives you a number of different matchups for face teams to come in. Are we sure they're heels? Uh, uh well, they cut promos like heels. Let's put it that way. Um, I whether they, I feel like they're uh, where we're pulling off this whole James Mitchell's daughters things here, and uh, yeah. like e- even if they're faces, they're gonna be dastardly devils. Well, you're right, and I think, and I think whether or not. You know, their heels or faces is up to us, um, but I think their promos of late have been a little, a little bit heelish, especially the one um, that we get a little later in this show from them. Um, it's a little more on the heel side, um, but there's a plethora of face tag teams in the women's division. Um, so good on them. Um, Havoc finally found a tag team partner to defeat Fire and Flava. Right. Poor Novaya. Yeah, she's, yeah. Yes, he's fallen into obscurity now. Well, and, and you know, I think maybe you're right, probably, at the, you know, when you mentioned the contract situation, Ryan, right? because, um, you know, you get Rosemary and, and Havoc are pretty, you know, TNA impact loyal people. They've been, you know, that's where they've primarily been, say, for Lucha Underground, I guess, but, but and some stuff in Mexico, but still, but still those two, that's kind of where they are. Where I think if we look at Tasha Steeles and, and Kiera Hogan, they're at the beginning of their career. So um, it's, it's probably just a safe, a safe thing to put the belts on. Plus, and, but plus, you know, I mean, it's, it's credible. They're big. And the other, and Fire and Flava, for as great as they are, they're not big. So, I mean, I think it's, I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate it, but you know, whatever. Yeah, they were actually growing on me a little bit. Fire and flavor were, but yeah. well, welcome to the bandwagon, Dwight. <laughs> I'll continue to be the curmudgeonly old man. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Show opens up with what else could it open up with? Ultimate X, Six Man, Ace Austin, Chris Bay, Petey Williams, <clears throat> Rohit Raju, Trey Miguel, and your winner and still champion, Josh Alexander. This match was incredible. I loved this yeah. match. Um, a number of just absolutely insane spots. Uh, I got to tell you guys, I don't think Rohit Raju has ever been booked more properly in a match than he was in Ultimate X. Um, Correct. Because he's trying to do all the sneaky heel things to get the, the belt down without actually having to climb all the way up. <laughs> the, the stick. Like, who, who hasn't thought of that before? It's like, wait, no one. what do you do? Take the ladder up and knock it down with the ladder. Like, why has no yeah. one thought of that? <laughs> well, yeah. No, no, because well, ladders funny. are expressly forbidden in Ultimate X. Yeah, and it's funny, though, because when he was trying to um, use the rope to make the pulley system to pull him up, <laughs> Matt thought at first, and I thought it was even more clever. He was trying to loop it through the title to pull it down. Yeah. I was like, God, that's so that's so much more than trying to like, you know, yeah. elementary school gym class yourself up there. <laughs> but you know what? He got up there. He got up mm-hmm. there. This was this was such a great way to book a bad guy in Ultimate X. That is not the typical. I mean, we've seen so many times where the guys are afraid to climb. They're afraid of heights. Things like that. This was such a refreshing way to book a heel in the match. Well, he's um, like a com- he's a comedy heel too, so it's like he's cheating, but it's hilarious at the same time. But, <laughs> but it's like. genius! It's perfect yeah. genius. Yeah, it is. Um, speaking of perfect genius, and I've seen those matches. And Ryan, I know you're a big TNA Impact guy, yeah. going way back. And you probably wish there were six sides to the ring. So do I. But hey, what yeah. we did, what we did see this last night. Well, when we at this show was something I've never seen in an Ultimate X match, and that was yeah. with jo- Josh Alexander hanging upside down and with the ankle lock. Oh, oh my gosh. I loved it. I thought that was such a cool spot. It was a cool spot. I'm like, yeah. okay, I- I'm going to quit. I think I thought I've seen it all. I have not seen it all. I typically yeah, hate because, those spots. but Yeah, because then you get the Canadian Destroyer from the Cables. Oh, oh my God. I... <laughs> We could probably spend this entire show talking about how insane this match was. If I'm being real with you guys, um, yeah, um, I do. I do want to make note because we haven't t- touched on it yet. Um, we get Matt Stryker back on commentary for the show, and thank God because when 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 he calls a match, it's so much more believable, and you're a little and and you're more invested than you are than with you know Josh Matthews. Um, I will give Matthews his due, and I've said this before on here. He is better with D'Lo Brown than he was with Madison Rain. Um, right. Yeah. I don't know if that's just, you know, you, you have the, the chemistry in your marriage, but it doesn't translate to commentary, which whatever. Um, Impact did what they had to do to get by. Good on Josh Matthews for covering Matt Stryker for whatever reason that he was out. Hopefully everything is okay. But, yeah, Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown on commentary are fantastic. I really yeah. enjoy them. Sure. Wouldn't would not have uh, told you guys that I feel like a year ago I would not have thought that was a, a go to commentary team. I always enjoy Matt Stryker though. For sure. Yeah, and then and then I like to finish this match a lot. I like the callback from Ultimate X's past with the two guys, you know, with you know, with the hands on the title at the same time. He's um, awesome trying then, to do the AJ Styles spot. Yeah. yeah. And then I appreciate commentary not being completely blind to the past and actually make making note like, hey, Michael Shane, Frankie Kazarian did this, did the same thing. And here we are in 2021. It's still a legitimate situation. Just small things that just add to a match. I, I give AEW a lot of credit when they do it, but Impact has really been so on top of that lately as well. Yeah. Um, I love Impact. Yeah, Impact continues to step it up. They still have their moments, but God, I I have thoroughly enjoyed Impact. I hate the fact that they are on Thursday nights. Yeah, Yeah. and this is definitely my match of the night, for sure. They're they're definitely going in the right direction. They are. Um, Oh, God. Yeah, I think this has to be my match of the night. It was just so good. Um, there There is competition 
in terms of match of the night. Yeah. The main event is phenomenal, but <sighs> we will get there. Up next, we have a mixed tag match. It's Brian Myers with young boy Sam Beal and Tennille Dashwood with Caleb with a K, sporting new blonde hair. Kind of dig it. Uh, versus Matt Cardona and his mystery tag partner, Chelsea Green, who is back in Impact. Um, they did a real cool combination of her hot mess express character. Um, small details that I love because they're, they're officially married. They, they're, they, they call fiance, but they are officially married. They just haven't done like the actual like big ceremony. They've signed the paperwork. Um, but uh, she's coming out and, and everyone knows Hot Mess Express started when she got left at the altar. Uh, Cardona is like, let's do it. And she's like, that's dumb. And does the entire like wedding kiss before coming down to the ring. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Matching ring gear. I was about it. This is a cool moment for Impact. And if you if you watched on Twitter, she posted a picture of her the X ray of her arm, and so the cast is is legit. It's legit. Good. I was, yeah, it's legit. Mm-hmm. But uh, and and I guess I mean, and you could tell that they were protected a little bit by the way they worked. But it really didn't make any sense for it to be anybody else but her. Honestly, agreed. Yeah. Um, I I had said it might not be just because I didn't know if she was actually cleared or not because of it. Um, but man, turns out <laughs> Maryland Athletics Commission actually did shut it down at, at a Ring of Honor. Um, also, to speak on that, since she has shown up now on both promotions, the plan is she's she's going to work both. She doesn't have a full time contract with either, and both are cool with her working with the other. Love it. Yeah. Wrestling is so much better when companies work together. <laughs> yeah, she's pulling a Matt Cardona. Yeah. You know what? That's yeah, fun. do it. Yeah, no, and that's, and that's, and yeah, don't get me wrong. That's not a knock. Like, you know, you're, I mean, you're, you're a free agent. This is the best time in professional wrestling to be a free agent and do whatever you want. There are so many outstanding wrestling promotions out there. There's so much good, good, good wrestling outside of WWE and even AEW to that, to that extent, thinking of the two big major American promotions. Yeah, you know, so go, go, go explore. Go have fun. Um, sure. Next up, W. Morrissey defeats Eddie Edwards by pinfall. Can't tell y'all how happy I am to be wrong on this prediction. This seemed to me like the clear Eddie Edwards getting his big win against W. Morrissey. W. Morrissey murders him afterwards. I figure someone's got to uh, be the guy to, to beat him. But yeah, happy to be wrong. You know. This 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 match sub- just surprised me a lot. Um, this one is the is the most underrated card, the the most underrated match on this card, from even just a pure storytelling aspect. Um, you know who who else other than the man who has been destroying champion after champion? You know. You know, who else is he better suited for than the heart and soul of, you know, Impact Wrestling? And the whole match was just beautifully done. And I think through, you know, Morrissey, you know, trying to just destroy Eddie Eddie Edwards and him constantly coming back. And I know we give Eddie Edwards a lot of crap because he dresses like a homeless person. You know, but, well. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. God, he can tell a damn story in the ring. Yeah, you know, and yeah, and and th- and this match was pleasantly surprising. Um, you know, I I'm really iffy about the finish because I like it because it's like you know you can't beat heart heart and soul, but at the same time it's like I can't be heart and soul, so I'm just gonna be a dastardly heel and do it by any means necessary. Um. Uh, good on W. Morrissey here to get the win, though. Um, All right. All right. I'm, I'm, t- I'm tired of hearing you guys uh, give Eddie Edwards any credit. Anyway, so I'm going to come in and say, and, and say, and I don't like his stupid braid hair either. That's another yeah. thing. But anyway, but um, but anyway, uh, no, you're right. I mean, it was a good, it was it was a good match for what it was. And Eddie, he, he, it's just he's he, he. I cannot get the Walmart Tommy Dreamer 
thing out of my mind. Like that he's Walmart yeah. Tommy Dreamer to me. But but and that was a good story that went on literally for years with Raven and Tommy Dreamer. But with this one, all I could think of, and I don't know, and you were talking about the finish. It was a good match. I mean, all that. All I could think about was the finish. I was like, dude, how uncomfortable is that to wrestle that whole freaking match with a chain wrapped around your ankle? Yep. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I was thinking, like, where are you going to stick? Wow. And why didn't he, all the t- like, he kicked him, like, a bunch of times. He had the freaking chain in his boot. Like, that didn't, uh, that didn't knock him out. I don't know. He should have, he should have just El phantasmo him. Right. I was like, that was, but anyway, because I remember, like, the Iron Sheik used to load his boot, you know, kick him with his yeah. boots. It was like, wait a minute. He had that chain the whole time, and didn't he, like, kick him a few times? Like, didn't he hit him with the chain already? And why was he knocked out then? And maybe I was thinking about it too much, but whatever. I think it does set them up where he can, they can at least milk this for a little bit longer uh, and do that. But um, I'm glad to see that. And gosh, W. Morrissey, when you talk about somebody's head and shoulders, above what he was you know when he was doing that dumb daniel bryan you're short nonsense i mean this is so way beyond that like it exactly and you know what i like the fact that he's playing off of uh, i hate saying this but he's using his real life issues that he had and he's turning into a solid storyline of you guys made me the punchline and now it's my turn to get back yeah um solid solid storytelling i love it like I said, man, Impact did not really miss this weekend. Um, speaking of not missing, Mahabalashira and uh, Madman Fulton had surprise tag team. Matt, take it away. Take it away. Yeah. Um, last, the last Ring King heavyweight <laughs> champion, Mahabalashira. Mayakopa. Mayakopa. So. Oh, my God. Didn't that whole thing last like 12 episodes, wasn't it? Um, it lasted like 27 episodes. Okay, okay. Fine. Ryan, I got to make you a shirt. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, you can find on that. Zazzle. Yeah. You're going to go to Zazzle.com and find um, – it's just going to say Rinka King – or sorry, last Rinka King heavyweight champion, Mahabali Cheryl. Oh, it's not even going to say his name because I don't want to get copyright there. Ranking King doesn't yeah. exist anymore. I can reference it. I don't know who owns it. They might sell the copyright, but who knows? Maybe, maybe we could buy it. Susan. I don't know how much it's worth, but we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So they face the returning tag team of Finn Juice, who squashed them in like a minute. <laughs> Listen, the, the, I think the thing I laughed about this whole segment the most was – all right, so the whole thing is that Bolton and Cher are upset because it was the Ultimate X match and they were barred from ringside. So they come out, and then you get Scott Demore who comes out, and he's and he's like, oh, since you guys are in the ring, you're looking for a fight, I ran into some guys backstage who want to throw some dukes. And I'm like, who the hell says that anymore? You know, it was just, Juice Robinson. And, Juice Robinson and, says that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and guess what? I should have seen it coming. Finn Juice comes comes out next, and not the last, and just, <laughs> just exactly what you think. You know, it yep. was good. I'm down it for was. it. I love Finn Juice. <laughs> gonna be real important for things that are gonna happen later. I almost said it. Um, all right, now this is where they did kind of miss for me. Chris Saban defeated Moose via pinfall. Yes, Moose got caught, but it's one thing if he got caught off of like a quick roll up or something, but you had two unsuccessful roll ups and then a third successful one. So it just felt, I don't know. I, I want to done so, it this way. I really thought about this because we talked about it like, you know, we're thinking, and as of this point in the card, you know, Kenny Omega is going to be defending the impact world championship at the end of the evening, you know, and we're thinking like, who's the guy to take it off of him if it's not going to be Sammy. And obviously, you know, the clear cut choice should be, should, should be Moose, you know, but then you're thinking like, okay, well, Saban wins like this. Maybe it's not Moose. (laughs) Like maybe they have other plans and we're just, we're more high on moose than impact man- management is 
because there's no reason if you're pushing Moose to be the one that finally conquers Kenny Omega, would you book him like this? Hmm. Maybe it, I, I'm going to, yeah, I'm with you too. Actually, I didn't mind it because I like being surprised. I like it. I like it when something happens I wasn't expecting. And mm-hmm. I don't think any of us were expecting that. Um, yeah. The, look, as, uh, as Simon, Simon Miller from what culture says, you know, the most devastating move in all of professional wrestling, uh, which is this surprise roll up. Um yeah. Yeah, the match the, itself made sense the way they did it. You got, you know, the fast guy against the strong guy and working on, you know, Saban was working on leg and doing the stuff. Like, that's what you would do. And 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 so it, it made sense the way that the match came out. The, the ending, maybe not so much. But I'm going to say that maybe, may, look, call me crazy. Call me crazy. But maybe this foreshadows... Um, that maybe the guy to uh, take the, bu- the the belt off of Kenny Omega is not Moose, but someone else who shows up later. Just saying, and maybe that's why the Moose train got derailed. Maybe interesting. I think I think I think Chris Saban versus Kenny Omega is going to be a good match. <laughs> I mean, I I. I feel like that's got to be the next move here if Kenny Omega retains at the end of the night. Um, I feel like uh, Chris Saban racking up a bunch of singles wins here. Um, Kenny Omega is kind of carving through the field here. Um, Chris Saban is going to put on a heck of a showing. Yeah, It'll be a good match. You're muted. I see your lips moving, but I can't hear the words. I said they had real good chemistry when they faced off in that six-man tag. Yep. Um, I would – I don't know. I just prefer it not to – I like Saban. I really do. I just feel like we could could do better. It's not supposed to be a knock on him, but – I mean, it is. You think – say Chris Saban, you don't – you don't think – you think X Division champ. Tag team champ, you don't think world champ. I'm sorry, he's a stone. Oh, and 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 he is a former world champion, he did win the title. I I do have nothing but respect for the guy. Um, but I just feel like we have a lot of opportunities here to push younger talent or more prominent talent to the forefront. You know, like maybe that's what we should be doing. Um, what? No. Right? Never. Never. Uh, uh, to your point, uh, Chris Saban is 39. God. <laughs> makes well, you feel real old. Makes you, and, no, it doesn't make you feel real old. It just makes you feel like, God, that dude has found the fountain of youth. <laughs> Yeah, and in his defense, Moose is 37. So, I mean, I really don't know what the right answer is for that. <laughs> I was more so say talent who are probably going to be front runners, you know? Um, All right. I, I would love to see Kenny Omega versus Trey Miguel. I know I said that one before. I understand that he's the guy who's been pushed X Division title and such like that, but they have booked him to be in a world championship match before. I'd rather... Trey Miguel get the rub than Saban. Saban's proven commodity. I'm all for it. Let's elevate new talent. Chris Bay. Love Chris Bay. Yeah. You know? Um, just small things, you know? I know. Makes me, makes me feel a little crazy every once in a while, but. Let's get to the end because I want to tell you what I hope happens. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, The Good Brothers are your new tag champs. They defeat the team of Violent by Design of Joe Doring and Rhino, Rich Swan and Willie Mack, and follow ball with his new tag partner, Ryan Alvarez. Take it away. No way. No way. No, 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 no way. Jose. So they kicked it to me because I am notoriously 
a no way Jose hater. I despised him, despised his character. I thought it was the worst thing that WWE was putting on TV. Um, I like number one top of my hit list until until I interacted with one Brody King. Um, so he can go eat a dick. Um, but outside of this now, we're looking at No Way Jose. And I think the problem that I had with him in WWE was he just he was taking up a spot that other guys could be could could be occupying and it and this is completely a this is me on a one-way train because i understand he's a comedy wrestler okay i understand no way jose isn't your wwe champion i get that um and so this is the more pure side of wrestling, I guess, for me, um, and kind of hating on him during his time in WWE. Um, so now we look here to the flip side um, in, 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 in Impact Wrestling. They did an, a phenomenal job with Wrestle House. They've been doing great stuff with Swingers Palace. No way Jose fits. He fits. It's such it's such a great situation for him to be able to when he does when he does his conga line, everybody from Swingers Palace is in it. You know, it everything just makes sense for him to be here. It, it I like it. I like the fit. It's a good move. It's a good move. And you know what? No one really saw it coming. I know it was joked about on, on Impact on Thursday, but God, did Scott Demore hint at everyone who actually showed up? No. Maybe. Look, no. Are you sure? Next match. No, 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 no. But we did have someone. Uh, no, she, she showed up. She wasn't the challenger, but she showed up. No, no, no. I'm saying... The person in the next match, I don't remember being into that. No, 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 no. But I'm saying everyone he hinted at did show up. Because he hinted yeah. Chelsea Green. He hinted No Way Jose. He hinted the person who comes out at the end of next match. Yeah. You know? Uh, um, I guess you're right, yeah. Good on them. Yeah, Ryan, go ahead and take the next match. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, so this is for the Impact Knockouts Championship. Your champion, Deanna Peraza, versus mystery opponent. Who could it be? Um, it's the one and only Thunder Rosa. And the crowd popped for this. So great. She came out. This match was great from start to finish. It was so physical. It was fun. Um, I got caught in the work like once or twice. And this match is only like 11 minutes long, but still, um, this is fantastic. Um, Deanna does win. Um, she hits the Queen's Gambit, gets the win. Um, but unfortunately, it's overshadowed by one hardcore country herself. That would be uh, Miss Mickey James hyphen all this. Um, she comes out. Um, Deanna's irritated that she steals her spotlight. Uh, Mickey then invites her to NWA Empower. Um, Deanna says, no, grab your trash pack and get the heck out of here. Um, and then she hits a Mick kick. Rolls out of the ring. I um, I, my, this match was fun. I wasn't a fan of Mickey getting the one up at the end of this whole exchange, but I uh, I understand. We got a pay per view sell, so I mean, get more eyes on the product. I like both appearances. Yeah, yeah. My, I'm, I'll say my only complaint you hinted to it was that it that it was too short. That could those guys they could if you gave them and. 20 minutes they could have put on a match. If you gave them a half an hour, they could put on a great match. So, yeah, that was my only complaint. I mean, it was great. I love to see it, but it was too short. Yeah, agreed. I don't know where you you pull – well, you probably take from the W. Morrissey and Eddie Edwards match, but 
Yeah. Um, I have the times here pulled up and just looking at it. Like, there's just, there's not really any match other than that one that I'm taking the time from. Right. Maybe Saban Moose as well. Take five minutes from both of them, but then Saban pins Moose in like seven minutes. And then I'm here having a very different conversation about how angry I am. Yeah. Um, I'm not angry over it. Um, over, over, over the one segment I would take from, but I mean, I didn't, I, I don't think we necessarily needed the Finjuice segment. Um, I mean, that was a five minute whole shebang from start to finish. Even though the match was like, what, a minute and a half? You know, you had, you had them coming out to intimidate the referee, Scott Demore coming out, then the match. It's like, well, if we take that out and put those five or so minutes into this women's match, you're, you're probably looking at match of the night. Mm-hmm. Probably. Or at least a, or, 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 or at least a contender because the X division match is very difficult. Hard to beat Ultimate X. Yeah. Main event time, Sammy Callahan challenged Kenny Omega in a no disqualification match. Guys. It, mm-hmm. It's always Omega till it's not. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, and we were and we were talking about this as the match started, and it's no surprise at this point that Kenny Omega is dealing with a lot of injury. Um, you know, so this match works into that. You know, it's a more slow paced, more kind of you know physical match where it's not going to be physical as far as the toll on the body. But you know, it, it 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 works into that where he can still compete and go at his own pace, and you know, kind of kind of work to the match instead of the match working to him as the match progresses. Um, mm-hmm. I I thought this was absolutely fantastic um, from start to finish. It was a great match, and, then, um, and good on Kenny for showing a little bit of color. Yeah, yeah. Hey. he stabbed Kenny with a fork. I want to emphasize this and a pizza cutter. No, 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 yeah, the pizza cutter was the one the guy was like, Oh, I can't use a fork. Oh, well, guess what? He brought a pizza yeah. cutter on. I like they it. still got him with the fork, they still raked the fork over his head, too. I know, but he did the fork on uh, he did, oh, yeah. he did the fork on Sammy, oh my God. too. He did the fork like pulling at the side of his mouth. I was like, oh. <laughs> It made That's me. A- Dude, that's an Abdullah the Butcher um, classic, baby. That fork, I love and it. And you know what? We we're talking about this. You could have probably took and taken five minutes from this match and put it towards the women's match. But I really liked how we were really putting over the, the world title here. Yeah, um, yeah that's so, a, that, and and I was looking on just to see because I, when I after I watched that, I'm thinking, okay, I've seen what has passed for a five star match this year. Uh, that's pretty close to being in that conversation for sure. Um, it is rated as an 8.69 on cage match, uh, which is, I, which for me is more, um, indicative of, you know, that's, but then just depending on Meltzer to, to, to rate it and with the, and the ultimate X match being 8.16, I think that's about right. Because I was thinking that I was like, this is, this was a really, really, really good match. Yeah, it was a great show mm-hmm. from top to bottom. But here's the thing that we're all going to talk about forever and always. And this is now we have officially uh, made it. We've made it. The door is open. Okay. Um, while Kenny and the Good Brothers and Don Callis are celebrating in the ring, the lights go out. And all you hear is... B- 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 bullet club for life. life yep and then the moment that got cod oh which blade jay white walks out you hear with the, the never open weight title yeah uh you uh you hear the blade hit the concrete floor it sends chills up your arms the first few notes of that music hit your spine it was fantastic. It was nobody saw this coming. No. Nobody. No, and this is a think very that, well guarded secret. It was fantastically done. And so <laughs> you have AEW World Heavyweight Champion Kenny Omega in the ring, 
who just defended the Impact World Championship, now being, you know, greeted, I guess you could say, by New Japan Pro Wrestling athlete, uh, Switchblade Jay White, who is the never, you know, who is the never open weight champion. <laughs> like, wrap that around your head in 2021 that all of these things are swirling and coming together into one moment. It's beautiful. We officially also had the tease of AEW, Impact, New Japan, and AAA all working together. Yeah. Rumor of a super card show has been building lately, and, and I can't tell you how pumped I am. Now, all right, this is right from the Wikipedia, so take it as you will. Mm. In a worked shoot, the pay-per-view cut off while the commentary was still talking as someone hit the ring. We don't know if this was impact impacting or if this was actually planned. <laughs> Either way, take it as you will. So what ended um, up happening, according to the live crowd, according to mm-hmm. Sean Ross Sapp, love Sean Ross Sapp, is Finn Juice uh, hit the ring, Switchblade hit his finish on Juice and then ducked out. For those that don't know, Jay White is defending his title against David Finley here at Resurgence coming up here. I believe it's August 14th. Uh, mm-hmm. I might be off a day or no, I think I think I think I'm spot on with that. And that's and that's a, and that's a Ryan promise. Um, when I when I watched this Saturday and I watched it live, I thought exactly that this was planned it was exactly what they wanted to do it was hey somebody's running out to the ring you don't know who it is you'll find out when you watch impact on thursday uh that's what i originally thought and then you know never jump on twitter if you don't want things spoiled for you Um, (laughs) because immediately sean ross sap pop pops up you know and is like oh well um, and this is, you know, ver- verbatim from the tweet. It was, um, you know, and, I, and I've got to get this right because, you know, I just, Juice and Finley came out and attacked Switchblade. Switchblade hit his finish on Juice and ducked out. Um, mm-hmm. Now, if I wouldn't have jumped on Twitter and I would have just watched the live feed, I wouldn't have known. I would have just thought, oh man, what a hell of a way to finish a show. You have you have Kenny, the good brothers, Don Callis all throwing up the two sweet. Jay White look kind of looking at the crowd, kind of waiting, and then you don't know whether he's whether he's on board or not. And then cut to black. It makes you want to watch the show on Thursday. You know. I mean, th- I mean, I'm still. I mean, I still want to watch it, but I, th- I, I thought, I, th- I thought it was very well done. Can't, can't disagree. No, um, looks like we've temporarily lost Matt. Um, but overall, I thought this was an incredible show. Um, I thought it's the best one that um, Impact Wrestling has put on in a very long time. Um, I, there's there's not a lot of bumps in the road here, um, and I am super excited for people to start to get an eye on Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I think it's a very good show. A lot of really good things happening. For sure. Um. All right, we're gonna talk about Sunday show. Yeah. Let's shift gears. I'm not oh, well. So. Money in the bank. Shorty, what's your drink? Still the best money in the bank theme. Okay, but can we can we talk about before money in the bank, talking about what actually happened on the show, how much of a pain in the, in the ass it was to actually watch the show? Um, I'm not I was I was um well furious would be a small word because I actually was a, already a peacock premium. Peacock Plus, whatever it is I pay for every month. Subscriber because of EPL, because I watch English Premier League, so I already had it. 
And so it was awesome. I was like, oh, it's going to be great. And that's out that there will be, that'll be one thing I less I have to pay for since I'm already paying for this. Except no, except now I would much rather get on my VPN, pay $9.99 a month for a UK WWE network subscription. Um, so I could watch it without any freaking hassles and like this one and the, the one prior that we, this is, this isn't a new thing. They have problems with the stream. It's been the last couple and not, not happy about it at all. Cause it was utterly unwatchable on my, on anything except for like on a phone, you know, so that's, it's not cool. Um, yeah, so my um, understanding, uh, use a VPN you get blocked from the network. I don't know how they know, but there's a whole thing about it. This happened right before the men's money in the bank match. We lost, I think everyone's entrance. Um, and it, it was just rough. We, we put out on Twitter and we're like, is this just us? What's going on? Is it, is it God Sinclair's internet? I hope not. He just bought a whole nother router. <laughs> like he put the work in. Yeah, I actually bought a new one to make sure that Peacock didn't Peacock, but um, nope, it's me, Austin. It was Peacock <laughs> all along. Like, yeah. look, and I know everyone's going to say it, but it needs to be said, and hopefully they fix it so it doesn't happen again. Uh, Money. Ryan, you were saying, or, or maybe it was Dwight, I think it was Dwight pre, pre making it to, to – Recording here, uh, they had to switch to their international feed for Peacock. That was Dwight. You just got paid a billion dollars for your entire library and and for the essentially the purpose of selling pay per views. Yep. This cannot continue to be an issue. Right. People, this is gonna turn people away, and this is this is one of your biggest shows of the year. This is your first shows back with fans, and it, it showed. It was your first big show with fans. All right, this cannot continue to be a trend that we see. Right, and apparently, like from what I read today, um, one the one of the things was that like they didn't fix it because they weren't aware that it was a problem because everything on their end was working fine. So it, you could, can't tr chalk it up to like something at the venue that was messed up, right? At, that's there locally that was screwed up. You can't really do that anyway because you had issues at the last pay-per-view, the same thing a lot of people had. So it's, it's, it's a known issue. Something is happening. Um, they haven't fixed it. And you, you got to talk about SummerSlam is coming. I mean, Money in the Bank's a huge, you know, is a huge uh, uh, pay-per-view for them, but you know, SummerSlam is one of the big three pay-per-views for them. That's coming up. This cannot happen at SummerSlam. Absolutely can't happen. And so, you know, I don't, I don't, I mean, what you're talking about, you're talking about, we can guard, we can talk about how bad the product is and Raw and SmackDown and SmackDown's actually been getting better, but it doesn't matter if I can't watch the show. You know, that's just frustrating. You know what, honestly? It didn't make me want to keep watching. It made me want to go like, well, show's over, guys. Yeah. I guess, I guess I'll rewatch before we, we come on here. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah, and I think um, when they originally had Peacock, uh, when they started showing li live WWE shows, everyone was like, oh, we can't, like, pawn? Well, like, you know, we can't rewind? And, like, that was the main issue at the, <laughs> like when this first happened. Now, as you would imagine, it's, we're, it's, kind, it's of, we're kind of hey, it's still an issue. That's still an issue. Oh no! Oh, absolutely. It <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Um, while we're supposed to be progressing and making Peacock a better streaming platform, nothing's being done. And I, if I didn't have a show to do for the dang channel, I <laughs> I don't know. I can find. I can find more ways to spend my five bucks a month. I'll be real. I'll be real. And, and, and you know what? I was really excited for Money in the Bank. This show yeah. was not bad. It was not a bad no. show. No. We're going to come on here and we're going to talk about some things that we thought weren't good. 
don't get us wrong. It's still WWE. They're still going to WWE. But this was not a bad show. The Peacock issues made me want to stop the show at, what was that, 9 o'clock, 10 Mm o'clock? Oh, gosh, it was late. You know, it was it was it was late enough to where us, you know, average Joes that are that are still working are like, you know what? I'd rather go to bed than watch anything more. Yeah, I had to teach this morning. I don't want to look. My Sunday sleep schedule is sacred. Yep. yep. I only I give that up for pay per views. And yeah, you, I had to be at work at four thirty this morning. Uh, oh, oh, well, uh, just uh, well, I don't want to. You also it. just it do you also just get that Twitter notification about the rematch from, from Sean Ross Sapp? Can't I can't tell you? No. Guys, I, I got to put Sean Ross Sapp over here. I follow him. And I get the, I, he is one of the few people who I have the the notification bells on, where I get a notification every time he tweets. I love watching him ruin people's life when they think they try to troll him um all right money in the bank let's let's get into this match here because we're going to talk about the notification i just got uh when yeah. it comes up pre-show Usos defeat the mysterios via pinfall get a dui get a tag title um, i like yeah that's just, you know what screw them that that is yeah. that's you know that that was so just terrible. That was just freaking terrible. What a terrible decision. You can't even chalk that up to being like, oh, we didn't have time to change it. You could have done literally anything. It's the freaking pre-show. You know, yeah. just what a joke. What a joke. Um, I'll tell you, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Usos got a bigger pop than the Mysterios. And <laughs> the Mysterios even came through a portal. Okay. I think I think that was still... more to their detriment than to their help. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. That thing was stupid. Also, let's 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 talk about the AR. Okay. What a god awful waste of money. Okay. We're releasing people left and right. And we really think that this is what we care about to be on our televisions. This is like like I really want to see like little tiny sparkles, like flutter over my screen as we had Charlotte Flair come into the ring. Like, like you're releasing people. You're costing people money and jobs. But yet you can still do this crap on a week-to-week basis? It's uh, awful. I really want to emphasize that I, I don't think it's the AR stuff per se. I think it's what they choose to do the AR stuff for. Like the Roman Reigns Oh god, that was uh, awful. Trying that, to go Super Saiyan, that was horrible. Uh, that was um, awful. I, I like the focus on Asuka's masks, but God, why have we not just embraced that? The fact and just do cherry blossoms every time she comes out. Pat has been saying this forever. Yeah, I think that there so are better, better. There are there are better uses to use it. And, yeah. and there are plenty of instances across this car, but that's my two cents on it. You know, um, been a lot as far as the pre show, hmm. I'm, I'm gonna give you this one for free. Free, absolutely free. All right. Well, we've been a much cooler entrance for the Mysterios. If instead of the portal, if you're gonna do this whole portal vignette thing, instead oh, of them yeah. just walking through the thing, launch them like you launched Ray Mysterio in the right. early days of SmackDown because fans are back. And this would be such a cool throwback. To the history of yeah. wrestling, and Dominic Mysterio gets to do one of the big things. We're gonna eventually have Mysterio versus Dominic. Let's have the comparisons and the videos already done for it. Yeah. Um, no, I. Um, but back to the match. I didn't mean to derail us, but um, I, I. I actually thought the finish was clever. Um, it's something that I hadn't seen done in a tag match. You know, your tag partner using. You know you know his feet to help you cheat in the roll-up that you were already cheating at i thought i thought it was a great heel work um you know and you wouldn't know they were working heel uh with the way the crowd was reacting but um yeah good uh solid pre solid pre-show match didn't expect a a tag title spot well well maybe hey ryan maybe it'll be a good news bad news thing that 
instead of getting fired for getting a DUI, he'll get he'll they'll be uh, they'll get fired for getting over organically. I don't know. Yeah. Show opens up with the women's money in the bank match. Alexa Bliss, Oscar, Liv Morgan, Naomi, Natalia, Tamina, Zelina Vega, and your winner, Nikki A S H. Was it just me, or was the one thing that this match was missing? It was star power. We for I forget who was in the room with us, Matt, but. Asuka came out last, and someone said, Asuka's in this match? Like, like, and then I think someone else was like, oh, yeah, she's in this match. Like, we almost forgot. Like, she was an afterthought, you know, and... Um, well, she came out credit, last time. Yeah. Um, credit where credit's due, they are trying to invest time on SmackDown. Um, you know, trying to put Liv Morgan over... Um, questionable decision for Natty and Tamina being in this match, but whatever. Um, Alexa Bliss doing her best with the dog crap she's given. With the Wednesday Adam gimmick. Ugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, look, I this know was, with her. This was, this was the worst match of the weekend, and it was still not terrible. This was the worst match of the weekend? Yes. Uh, for yes. me, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I agree. Hundred percent. Oh man. Yeah, the, I, maybe you need to go back and rewatch it because this, this is not you know? this is not a great Money in the Bank match. Don't, don't oh, it's be. not. It, it might be one of the worst ones, but I don't think this is the worst match of the night. Oh yeah, it's, oh, I, 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 it's not even close. That's it's. Uh, I was just checking on cage match dot cage the 149 votes they rate this a 3.85. That's one of the lowest of the year uh, for pay per view. Match. Wow, see that's shocking to me. Um, I think it's because, and this could just be booking, but I, if you're if you haven't worked a ladder match before, and some of the women in this match have, but you can tell like just they don't know what to. Do you know? I know that they. I mean, we're. I mean, we're not dumb. Wrestling is pre predetermined, you know. So you have your spots, you know. But I think it's the in between where you know when we have two women like grappling over a ladder for over a minute, and you know, it, it's like, could we do something? Well, anything would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, my thing with that is you booked like three different spots for that one thing there. You had the the Naomi Tamina segment. Um, you had Natty finally getting Liv into the corner, and then you finally had uh, Alexa crawling up the ladder to scare the life out of uh, out of Liv. Was it just me, or was everything with Alexa Bliss like? She starts doing something and everyone immediately cuts her off. Did anyone else just yeah. feel that mm-hmm. way the entire night? Like anytime she tried to do anything. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to emphasize Alexa Bliss is a star. Yes. And, and one of the top women in WWE right now, maybe not necessarily yeah. completely work rate wise, but her character work, her promo work, she's top notch. No one cared. No one cared of her last night and it killed me. Yep. And they didn't, didn't book her like they cared. They didn't give her any I real segment don't. except for possessing Zelina Vega, which yeah. some people are into, some people ain't. Take it as you will. Let let her wrestle a little. Let her actually mm-hmm. do some yeah. stuff in ring. That's the big thing here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everything you're saying is absolutely correct. And it, it, it does fall on the booking because if you're building spots within this match and you're like, we got to do this spot, this spot, this spot, this spot, it's okay, well, how do I build my character within the match and still be able to show off what I have? And with seven other women in the match, I, it could have been, there could have been a little more done with her. But mm-hmm. you know when they run out of time, they just bury her underneath all of the ladders surrounding the ring. Yeah, and that's right. it. That's, <laughs> it. that's the end of the night for her. Yeah, yeah. she doesn't come back from that. Uh, 
here is my best explanation of this. And, and God, we hammer this every pay per view. The wrestlers do the best they can in ring, and they do the best they can mm-hmm. the mic with what they are given. They are still hampered by by uh, questionable decisions in terms of cook uh, uh, of of storytelling in terms of what they can do in their matches. Because now we know there's been enough interviews to talk about it. Every moment at this point is now planned out before they hit the ring. Mm-hmm. All right, let me let me make it worse. Wait, 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 because I, I got I got somewhere I'm going with this one. All right, it was said last night. WWE is so good at making cool moments, and they're right because you do get some cool moments. I, I mean, Alexa Bliss crawling up the ladder is cool. You know, her staring down everyone uh, as they come in the ring and they focus on that. You know, it, it, it's interesting. It, it's something that we're going to talk about. We're going to go back to it. All right. You can have these cool moments. I really, really, really like a good, cool match that I can sit here and tell you from start to finish. I thoroughly enjoyed but we're so focused on our small thing here, small thing here, small thing here, small thing here. This is the stuff that everyone bashes the young bucks for, but like, this is all WWE wrestling. Hey, here's our big moment in this match. And we're going to like punch each other, roll out to the ring and then set up for the next big moment on the outside of the ring. Like it's spot heavy. Even if they're not, doing flips even if that's springboarding it's still spot heavy all right we need to do a better job of weaving this together spot <laughs> no, uh, no, no. emphasize i don't spot i don't, I don't just I, flippy shit no you're right i i, I mean i i don't consider um you know the you know tug of war with the ladder you know what you would consider a spot no, but yeah. it is. It's a moment that you yeah. want people to look at. It's not a good spot, but it's a spot. It's a horrible spot. And, and you know what? You're if you spend spot. five less minutes trying to build the transition to it, so you have them doing it, and you have Tamina and Naomi in place, so they're ready to do their stuff with it immediately, and then to push Liv Morgan into the corner. Yeah. It, it's a spot. It was yeah. loosely done, mm-hmm. but it's a spot. It's the same thing. All right. It's so draft. Yeah. And in the same Tighten breath, in the Tighten same breath, <laughs> in the same breath as what you're saying now is the very scary looking Nikki ladder jump into the ring. Where she, where her foot hit the rope. Did it? Yeah. You're, you're sure about that. It did. It, it like, okay. I, I think I she cleared it, but like her toe hit it on her okay. way in. I think her trajectory was still the same, but um, because it's another one of those spots that Jeff and I get on everyone for, where we're all just standing there, like all kind of huddled together, we're waiting. But this one was really bad. <laughs> they were there for at least ten plus seconds, like just kind of like, Ugh. like like just not really looking like they're doing anything to just to, to be there to catch the spot to make it look organic <laughs> organic yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know and it, it was that that was that was rough to watch and i'm and i hope that everyone is okay uh speaking of everyone okay naya naya jackson's back on raw the new haircut oh um, god good for her uh good for her for getting a haircut hey, i just want to make it worse and i'm going to finish it up with this we talk about something else all right i thought um, i thought i did make it worse no, nope. no, you're no, I'm gonna make it even worse than that. You know, you say we're, we're hampered by booking. You know, what's worse than bad booking is lazy booking, and you know, what's worse than lazy booking is lazy bad booking, and that's what this was because this was freaking Otis all over again. We're doing the same thing, okay? Trying to elevate somebody using the money in the bank, and that's it, Nikki. God bless Nikki, she does not belong in that spot just like Otis didn't belong in the spot. So he did it for the moment, and then you got nothing to do with it. They got nowhere to go with it. Or you're going to have to do some convoluted story and end up putting it on The Miz, or end up putting it on Asuka, or end up putting it on anyone else. Aww. But they did it for the one-night thing. So guess what? It's Otis. Thank you. Two years in a row, he just did the same thing. So th- that's all I have to say about that at the end. I don't have an issue with... 
with, with Nikki winning Money in the Bank. I do. I just wish it, look, Nikki Cross was and is one of the better, once again, one of the better workers on the roster. Look at all of her mm-hmm. stuff in NXT. She's fantastic. I, I, I get this almost superhero thing is, is her idea, apparently, and all of this. Can we, like, tighten it up? Once again, can we tighten it up? If this is what we're going to do, yeah. like, could we have started this one or two months ago? And built to this more naturally. I what she's she's beaten Rhea Ripley and Charlotte prior to turning into a superhero. If we were gonna have her turn oh. into a superhero and win money in the bank, yes, in a beat the clock challenge, she beat both of them. No, no, I was going to say she's not a superhero, she's almost, almost a, superhero. a superhero. I hate you. So <laughs> <laughs> if this is what we were building towards, why have we not done a vignette? Why haven't we done like a, a, a minute long backstage segment when she's coming to the ring like we've done in the past? You could have built to this because she so doesn't much belong better. Nikki she, should have so, been a women's champion by now. She should have. She, she, she doesn't belong in that spot, dude. She's been booked as a comedy person, as a, and and that's that's who she is, man. Unless you take her off TV for eight months and repackage her. Or something like the feat they did with Bray Wyatt. Like it just ain't happening. That this is a character. This is she's a comedy person. They put her in that role. Worse than that, that is how they see her. They don't see her as Becky Lynch. They don't see her as Charlotte Flair or Rhea Ripley. They see her as the Hurricane. They see her as Otis, and that's who she is. And so with that, she's got no business winning the Money in the Bank. But you know, we'll see what hot mess that they turn this into because that's what it'll be sorry yeah no and and to the point you know that you know no i don't think that they view her as the hurricane because this is because as far as we're being told as far as what we are to be you know told is that this is all her idea all her all all her gimmick this is the this is keeping her a job right now essentially i think this is keeping on tv now i will say that they missed the boat when she was a part of sanity and she was red hot and they could have pulled the trigger at any point in time during there for her to have at least a smaller women's championship run or even back at nxt i mean miss the boat on that you know but i think i think the thing is is that nikki cross is a more than capable worker um, if this is what is going to keep her on TV, keep her a job, you know, we don't have to like it, but I think that, you know, kudos to her for actually, you know, pitching a gimmick, being able to use the gimmick that, you know, you are, you are pitching. And this is even something Damo has come out and said since his, since, since his release, it's not very often you go to brass and you pitch something that actually is followed through on and to Nikki Cross's credit, I, I give, I give her a lot for just doing for, for, you know, carrying her baby and WWE must view her in some way to be able to give her the money in the bank brief briefcase, just as they saw Damian Sandow in, in, in a certain light when they, when they gave it to him. So I think, I think, I think it's just, you know, different, different perception here as far as what is where we see Nikki cross on the card. I want her on my TV. I want her to be successful. I just want them to do right by her. And I feel like we are so quick to move to stuff without any kind of build. Um, We're talking about missed opportunities. She could have been a world champion right after she had the split with Alexa when Alexa joined the fiend and we are slow, we were slowly building her, but then we had her wrestle on main event for 18 weeks. Yeah. Of being on TV when, when she was a former tag champ and had time and momentum, but let's, let's, I, I can lambast this forever. She won by climbing over Liv Morgan to grab the briefcase as five other, six other women were standing on ladders. I was going to say, we didn't even talk about the finish. And how this has never happened. AJ Styles and Omos defeat the Viking Raiders to retain the tag titles. 
This, to me, I think is my worst match of the night. Uh, yeah, nothing against AJ, nothing against Omos, nothing against the Viking Raiders. I just didn't care because I knew what was happening. <laughs> yeah, for me, this is not far behind. Um, if that makes you feel – if that puts it in context. Uh, it, it was – I mean, it was it was good. I just love yeah. seeing AJ Styles. When, yeah, when, when, to see. Whenever there's four people in the ring and three, and three of them are, you know, the War Raiders and AJ Styles – you're, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, yes, right. It just, meh. I know. I just say, give me the, give me the War Raiders and AJ Styles. Uh, that's right. I use that name. Uh, anyway, um, War Machine, War Raiders, whatever. The Viking experience. Viking experience. And AJ Styles, they looked good <laughs> to me. This match was at least twice as good as the uh, Women's Money in Bank match, but. Um. Second best match of the night, Bobby Lashley murders Kofi Kingston. Mm-hmm. Second worst Whoa, match of the night. Sec- sec- second sec- best match of the oh, night. Oh, God, man. What show did you All watch? Right. Your, so, your, pe- your peacock must have been glitching way worse than mine. No, 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 no. Here's why this is the best thing ever. Because this is what Bobby Lashley should have been doing from mm-hmm. the get-go. I understand we're going to – well, potentially, potentially. There's a thing that just popped up that said – don't be surprised if maybe some things get switched around that have been oh, talking yeah. about. So maybe, God, just maybe we're not going to moving hear a horrible theme song hit on Monday Night Raw tonight. Yep. But mm-hmm. this is what Bob Lashley should have been doing. This is what he should have been doing in 2007 when he should have took the belt off of John Cena. I'm not going to rehash my entire spiel last night that I had. But this is exactly what should have happened. He should have squashed Kofi. We are reestablishing. Uh, oh, oh, damn it. <laughs> oh. We are reestablishing Bob Lashley as top heel, mass murderer, king of the ring, any other great nickname you want to give him. We are establishing as the top of the food chain, as he should be. Yeah, and um, you, if you had any hope that Kofi was going to win this match, um, I think it was ruined for you the moment that they said that Goldberg was going to be on Raw. Yeah, which maybe, maybe not, may not be happening now. Maybe not. Apparently, apparently, some things should be getting moved around. I know what is Moving happening forward. on Monday Night Raw tonight. <laughs> I'm looking for confirmation on that. Oh, I just got a Sean Ross Sapp tweet. Oh, yeah. It's it's yeah, official. it's confirmed. Yeah. Carrying crosses, ducking Samoa Joe and debuting on Monday Night Raw tonight. Oh, my gosh. So that reaction you all saw from us is that coming through. Yeah. Let's hope I don't he know. gets the entrance he needs. Yeah, also, I don't let's wrap know. This up so we can watch it happen. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he'll do this and be on both until he wraps up with Joe. Charlotte Flair defeats Rhea Ripley to win the women's title to become a 14-time women's champion. And the main event of Monday Night Raw this evening? Charlotte Flair Rhea versus Rhea Ripley. Man, I'm like, I want this to be over. I want – seriously. You're just going to this... keep coming around. Yeah, this feud – it has probably been one of the worst of the year. And it's n- not always because of the wrestling. Ryan. It, yes. Do you want a crutch fight? Eh. I get a crutch and you get a crutch and we try and swing it at each other while lazily trying to look like we're playing with lightsabers. Do you want to fight with crutches? Exactly. The musical. On Monday, not you know the musical. God, Dwight, how much do you hate everything at this exact moment? <laughs> Yeah. Well, and and you know, you guys know I've I've not been a Rhea Ripley fan really at all. I mean, I I see what where I see by looking at her what you think she could be, and then when she gets the chance to, she does just doesn't. And of course, I love Charlotte, but come on, man, that's just once again what I say: bad booking and lazy booking, and. That's lazy. That's lazy. Of course, we you know we released a lot of good people who could have good matches. Oh, are we just? Like it, it, well, 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 let's just say, are we just? Is it all about waiting and for us to get Charlotte and Becky Lynch again? 
Is that what we're, that's like everyone else is an afterthought. That's what that is. Cause that's what it looked like. Yeah. Um, why else? Uh, Dwight, if you're not a four horse woman, you don't matter. Yeah. Well, apparently. Yeah. And I get, and you can see who's in the main event tonight. Um, she was, uh, Becky was backstage last, last night and she's backstage again tonight. Yeah. She threw out her own oh, Instagram, a picture of herself in front of the building. Yes, she's done that for every major pay per view. Oh, yeah. Done that for oh, okay. you know, it could just be her yanking her chain. Maybe it got moved because people called out on it. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I think she's gonna be back by SummerSlam. <laughs> I just I just wish we could just watch good wrestling. Match really of the nighttime. Do. No, you god, man. Yeah. How wrong no, can you be? No, 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 no. This is the match no, of the night. Is, no, Vicky this winning the money in the, the bank is the match of the night. Okay, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let I'm I'm gonna let you have it. Um, uh, because you know what, mm-hmm. there weren't any stupid shenanigans at the end of it that made it way stupider than it needed to be. Um, you don't think that the dragging Drew McIntyre was a shenanigan? When, when you know what? Did, yeah, <laughs> but no, no, no. But that made sense. No, it made, it made sense, sense, but that's a little. It is a shenanigan when three guys beat up that aren't in the match beat up a guy that is in the match. That's shenanigans. But that works for me because there's storyline. They've been building that up for the past three, four weeks on Raw. It makes sense to me. I have no issue with it. We'll, we'll get there. We'll talk about the next match here in a minute. <laughs> uh, Big E winning about damn time. I'm ready to see him as world champion. Yeah. So help me God if he catches in and loses. I, uh, I, will continue to be upset with WWE like nothing has ever changed. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the right person to win. Uh, mm-hmm. Great match overall. I really enjoyed this. Big ending off the top of the ladder was great. Kevin Owens yeah, might be dead. Um, in case you guys forgot, Ricochet could wrestle. Yeah. Oh, right. God. Oh, my God. That spot. That spot. Yep was so un and it was beautiful too it wasn't just like he did the spot which is always good but he and nick jackson do that all the time where yep. not only do they do these crazy flips over the ropes they do this stuff but they do it, it like it's beautiful but with they the way they do it so yeah that was probably one of the most beautiful dives out onto the ring to a bunch of people waiting to catch you in my uh, memory. Um, if you uh, go to the Young Bucks Twitter page, uh, their Twitter bio is Ricochet stole Nick's ladder dive. <laughs> it's true. Also, if you're not following that, it's excellent. <laughs> so here you go. Sorry. Tweets here. Fantastic. So you well, like. Oh. All oh, right, go Becky ahead. Rose for carrying cross straight up. Who says no? <laughs> Regal, all about it. Oh, so they're nice. just not mentioning Aaliyah. Yeah. Um, well, here, here's the deal. I don't want you guys to think I didn't like the match. Bird. That freaking match was amazing, and Biggie yeah. should have won. You're right. Um, I, and I had so many holy, like, holy shit moments, and. Even that was even alluded to the commentary so good. Pat McAfee is so good, man. He really is good on commentary, but I'll take I think, him. But that was Corey Great. Was that Corey Graves? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. It was the it was all good. The the even the spot off the ladder um at the end was I mean that was crazy. And poor Kevin Owens, good lord. Oh my Beth gosh. Rollins, momentum killer. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh God! I was going. He went through it. I was like, "Oh, he was supposed to go perpendicular." I think because that looked like it hurt bad. Like you know, I'm starting to think that the eye for an eye thing wasn't a gimmick match, but more of a rib on how unsafe he is. I, you know, you you might not be wrong because that that was All bad. Right. All right, let's do it. Main event time. Roman Reigns versus Edge. And this, except for the last three minutes of this match, would have been my match of the night. Because this was a fantastic in-ring showing. Both men performed well. This is the Roman Reigns we should have had years ago. Um, God, the Edge pop was fantastic. Yeah. This was so good. Okay? Mm. 
here's where you lost me. All right. Seth Rollins comes out following the ref bump <laughs> and delivers a curb stomp to Edge. Yep. And that should have been it. If that's how we're doing this, that should have been it. Or maybe, or maybe Roman Spears Edge following that and we get a ref and there's a pin. All right. But there's another two minutes of this match where Edge is starting to build the comeback. He's starting to get ready to hit his spear. And Seth Rollins comes back out for the distraction on the ropes. We didn't need two of the same spot. You could have just stuck with one. It, it, it was overbooked for me. The finish was overbooked there. I understand we wanted to eventually mm-hmm. use that to get Edge and Seth Rollins out of the ring for what happens next. But it, it just it took me out of it because it was a great match up till that. Both of these guys delivered. Um, Edge is fantastic. This is the best Roman we're probably ever going to get. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you, that if you watch the beginning, I mean, this is the match one and a half an hour. They did this like those old um, Harley Race, Ric Flair, you know, Dusty Rhodes, the ones where you know it's going to go an hour, right? They paced it like that at the beginning, all this little back and forth and the lockups and the, you know, and they, and they drug out the beginning. It was like, it was very old school, which it built which, perfectly. Yes. Which is what it needs to be. There's like feeling out process or whatever. We're not just getting a boom. Let's go hundred miles an hour. It told a story. You're right on the end. You're right. That this, this, the, the second run in was just, that did that would that, that it seems sloppy is like did they botch the first one or something didn't mm-hmm. go right or something like, like the that maybe you yeah so because and then and also if you saw that like they showed the replay of of him getting rolled up on they're like oh my god he rolled up on his knee rolled up on his knee was like why does he act like he's concussed then if they rolled on his knee you know so it was just a, it was like maybe there was a botch there i don't know but um it was a good match, and I hate to say it, but but that was that was absolutely maybe it was Edge that that took Roman to the next level, but that's best Roman Reigns has yeah, looked. Yeah, it, it's the Roman we should have always had. Mm-hmm. We had look, look, and I, I preached this. I preached this last night. So, God, I apologize for ever, anyone who was there last night and and heard me say this exact same thing. Why do we try to make Roman John Cena? when the blue the blueprint for the rock already existed right a failed face run immediate heel turn biggest yes. star in the world today right like it's all it's all there i get it they're family we're going to call them on it but it makes sense the right. obvious choice can be the right choice <laughs> right he he doesn't have the rock's charisma that's the only thing and the thing about the the, the, the generic baby face, Rock, Rocky, you know, Rocky Maivia, didn't, you didn't see the charisma. You saw the athletic ability. You saw the big smile. You saw the good looking guy. But when he, when he got with the nation of domination, that's when that charisma came out. That's when the talker started. And he took that group over, you know, and it was, so yeah, you're right. I don't think Roman has that. I think he needs Paul Heyman. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm with that. But yeah, he is so much better as a heel than he's ever yes. been as a face. You're not making him say stupid shit like suffering succotash. Right. Like, right. Or him in can dog we just food. talk about how or, or poorly putting, or, booked he was as a face? Or putting him in dog food matches? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Once again, know. Roman has the tools to be successful. We just... Hey... Cena, new Cena. Come on, it, lazy. It's lazy, <laughs> and it doesn't cater to his skill set. He's a big badass who just beats the shit out of people, and that's what it should be. Right. They they want the action figure that they don't. The thing is, and they're like, "Wow, we don't really have someone who could be our baby face." champion we don't have that person i'm going oh you don't you don't have drew mcintyre on your roster he's right there you know you don't i mean it's like the 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 things we can see a million miles away it's like no they've decided 
this is who they want Roman Reigns to be. And I still think this is a long, this is the, the long, long Con story to, to him make to him get over to face. To, they think if they make him back face, that finally they'll he'll get over as a face. You know what? That's what they think. If if he does well enough on this heel run and they stick with it long enough for the payoff, yeah. I'll sit here and I'll eat my words. If we get to a point where I'm actually content with everything that Roman's doing, I will eat my words right here on this show. Yeah, but just think about it. Think about this though, Matt. Who's that? Who, if they turn him heel, okay? I mean, if they turn him babyface, then who's the heel? Who's the heel that causes him to turn baby? Is it Brock Lesnar? That's the only person I can think of that has, that, that would be, that could do that, right? There's literally no one else. There's no one else even close. There's someone that. that's not on TV right now. You're not think thinking about. Okay. And his name is Bray Wyatt, and he's the fiend, right? Is that what you're thinking? It's correct. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, maybe you're right. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Bray Wyatt's never been booked correctly in his entire run in WWE. Damn it. I've okay. seen many answers. None returned. <laughs> I've I've hounded this that they can't book a proper dominant heel, and we've seen that we've seen them correct that with Roman Reigns being right. dumped, with Bobby Lashley murdering yeah. Kofi. We're fixing that. Yep. Let's actually now prove that we can book a solid face champion or or or, or big time face and keep them a face with the crowd for over eight months because they've soured on Drew. He's won him back over with the crowd last night, but God, they hated him. Twitter hates him for some reason because he shoved down our throats. If we can figure out how to properly book a main face, we're good. We're good. We can right the ship. We just got to get both sides of the coin, man. <laughs> That's all it is. We're there. The talent is there. Just figure out the storytelling and booking. Let these guys actually talk for themselves and, and, and book their matches and we'll be content. It's just that simple. Do I wait for Dwight for the next bombshell that happened to close out the show? I think that's why he's gone. Oh, all right. Well, Edge and Seth Rollins fight each other. They leave the ring. Roman Reigns gets the mic and he says, now you have no choice but to acknowledge me. Good heel work, good heel work. <laughs> Listen, up. hold on. In the down, in the baby. World, in the world that we live in, this pop was. Uh, I, I. How how would you describe? I mean, it was the best pop was, of John Cena's career. Um. Hear me I out. I mean, it's. It I mean, it's definitely it's top. It, it's definitely top three. But like, when has a crowd been so utterly behind John Cena as a babyface? Oh no, you're right. It's been since like I think WrestleMania 21, uh, when he won Rumble. his first WWE title. Rumble, I would say Rumble 2008. Fans were red hot for him to come back. Was that eight or six? No, uh, it was Rumble 2008. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the best pop John Cena's had in a very, very long time. Agreed. Um, and, and you know what? You know what that further proves? You've done a good enough job with Roman Reigns as a heel that having John Cena back to potentially beat him and win the world or break the record and be the 17-time world champion has enticed the crowd enough to pop. Mm -mm. I disagree, man. I think it wow. was... I I, I think that and 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 I know the John Cena pop was note was 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 there that was legit. It's one of the I best pops he's had in his career. Well, but you got to think, Matt. They hadn't had a live crowd in forever. The, the crowd was on the edge. All the live crowds have been like that. They've been super hot, super hot. And so, yes, it was John Cena, and yes, it was a big moment, and yes, it was good that they booked it. I don't see it lasting though. I don't see it lasting where we go. Oh yes, now I'm so glad to watch John Cena every every week for the next month, and then he'll be gone again. We know that's probably what will happen. But but it's like I don't see it because are you still banned from Twitter. No, it was only it was only a 24 hour thing. People are over the friggin' moon. People are watching Raw for the first time in 
years now because Cena's back. Right, but it's, I get it, Matt. But but it won't. It's, I'm saying they do this every year at the World Short Rumble. term, not a long term. Yes, it's a. It'll it'll be the biggest thing today and yesterday and today, and then he'll be on next week's Raw. I mean, he'll I mean, be on SmackDown. I mean, um, on Friday, and then you'll and then they'll they'll start pushing this stupid storyline that has no basis in in any sort it's just it's there's no story to be had here right there's no story there's, I don't the, know if the, I agree with that dude, you're talking about people I have never you know I haven't watched the people that remember John Cena being on you, you forget because you're my like we remember I mean there's there's people that the when John Cena was on top of the world I mean that's 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 not recently okay that's not recently that's four or five years ago with COVID in the middle of that so John Cena is a guy that does TV commercials and he goes on a couple movies. That's what he is. That the John Cena that from the summer of punk, dude, that's 11 years ago. No, I'm with that. I'm saying that there is a history between Roman and Cena to build the story around. Yeah, but no one knows it. That's what I'm saying. You're going to have to look it up. I mean, it was there. You're going to have to allude to it. I, I haven't seen his promo tonight on Raw, uh, but he's definitely talked about how Roman can't replace Cena. Right, right, and and so I, I think I know what this is. This is the torch passing match. Yeah, they're bringing him back just to pass the torch. Yeah, and it'll happen, which is yeah, great, and it should. It should happen. Cena should lose. Right. I'm not and, sure if he is, but he should. Yeah, and, and he should lose just like Kofi lost to Bobby Lashley. It should look just like that. I don't know if you do that to to Cena. Well, I mean, so you give him, give him the, give him, I don't know, give, give him twenty minutes of Cena looking like maybe he can do it, and then showing that Cena can't do it. See, he's, he's he's past his prime, and Roman's right at peaking at the right time. Right. So you want Roman to like in the corner, and he looks at Cena, and he goes, "I love you. I'm sorry," and then spears him. That's what you want. That's what you want. No, 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 no. I want Roman to say. You were never the top guy. They were just waiting for me, and then shoots Cena in the yeah. face. Oh my god! With a spear. <laughs> a spear. Okay. Yeah. Or or, or, or look. look at he would look at me and go, John Cena. You were only the man because Kurt Angle went to TNA. Dude, no, no, no. But <laughs> legitimately, talk talk about this. The promo that's one of the most talked about ones for Roman Reigns is his back and forth with Cena, where he forgot his lines. Yeah. Okay. It was further proof that Roman shouldn't have been where he was when it happened. I need them to have Roman obliterate him on the mic. I need Roman to talk about how he beat Cena so bad he had to leave for Hollywood and become everything he said he wasn't. I need Roman to be the top heel guy that he is booked as. Okay. He needs to establish himself. This is the arguably the biggest match of his career. Mm -hmm. All right. If he can't establish himself as the biggest, baddest MF -er on the world today against Cena at SummerSlam, this entire build of him as the head of the table is going to lose a whole lot of luster. He needs to deliver in the promo department and he needs to beat the hell out of Cena when Cena tries to bring it to him. I want Slugfest, Spear, done. All right. 15 minutes of them going back and forth and then. Roman establishing dominance. Hey Ryan, you've been quiet. Would um, why don't you tell Matt how you would much rather see uh, Cena walk out there and then Edge come out and spear Cena? Why um, they I'm looking, each other? I'm in the minority. I'm looking for Cena to go over Roman Reigns. Oh my god! Oh my god! And then and then Nikki Cross cashes the money in the bank and oh, wins a war. Not Nikki Cross, but you're happy. No, <laughs> I I actually think this is. One of those, one of those face face uh, matches that we get, where in the sense of, I think you're right. The this this is a torch bearing moment, but not for Roman. I feel like Big E is going to challenge Cena after Cena breaks the record. Because Cena's going to break the record if he does defeat Roman Reigns. He's going to break the record. He's going to go out on his back. Big E is your new champion. I could be totally wrong, but God. either way, Romans, 
at this point in where we are, this is the perfect matchup for Roman to be able to highlight what he's been doing incredibly well for the last handful of months. Here's your here here it is. Here's my only thing with that is John Cena doesn't need the rub of defeating Roman Reigns. Whereas no, Big but e he needs the title off of Roman defeating the head of the table. Big E goes from the guy who we always thought should have been a world champion to mm. a top guy, you know. He gets I, so I, much more momentum. I think you can I think you can still do that with a feud with Cena, well with a match with Cena. And I feel like Cena breaks the record. Biggie comes comes out of it the champion. You have an immediate feud between Biggie and Roman. You never beat me for the title. You, know, you, you be you you beat a part timer for the title. You didn't beat the head of the table. And then now you have Biggie Roman. You could run that as long as you wanted to get to next year's mania. I mean, because the Rock is not confirmed. No, the Rock might not even be at Mania. He, he's not going to be at this Mania. He's going to be at the Mania in California. Yeah. So Which is two, we, not we this Mania, forget. but the next one. Yeah, we can we we can forget about Rome. We we can forget about Roman Reigns versus the Rock. No, uh, Roman's going to beat the Rock when it happens. Sorry, uh, Bobby Lashley is um, accepting an open challenge. It's Keith Lee back on Raw. Keith Lee has accepted Bobby Lashley's open challenge for the title. Baskin is damn glory. I don't think there's any way. No, there's not. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Look. look. I have to mute for a second to hear this, see if he has a. I'm, I'm going to wait, but actually, Cod, I'm going to say let's wrap up here because we were going on an hour and a half. Going yeah. a little extra here for you guys on our, on our off live show here. Um, ultimately money in the bank was a fine show. It could have been better with small improvements and I think better timing. Um, WWE, some of the best wrestlers in the world today don't know how to use them. Slam anniversary, fantastic show, fantastic surprises. I can't speak enough good things. Just book moves the right way. Yeah, I'm going to add to, I'm going to say a positive thing about um, WWE because I watched it and it was, it was probably the WWE pay-per-view I, I've enjoyed the most in a while, save for the women's match, which I thought was hot garbage. But I really wish I could have watched it live instead of having to watch some of it live last night and then go back and re-watch it today. I really yeah, wish I could have, yeah, think, because of Peacock. And so... Um, yeah, so like I watched the women's, I could not watch that at all yesterday. So I watched it today. Um, I saw the last three matches was was what I was able to see it live because it, I, it was just so glitchy. But anyway, um, yeah, great weekend of wrestling. We and Fighter Fest was great too. I mean, it was for me. It was like bam, 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 one right after another. I enjoyed the heck out of it. So great to be a fan of professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Agreed. All right, Cod, it's time. Hit him with the plug. Yeah. Um, the splash page is down in the description box. Click that. It takes you to all of our socials. All right. Also, down in the description box, it takes you to the YouTube page of our very good friend, Tantalizing Tony, that we met at Ring of Honor Best in the World 2021. Um, as far as I know, he will be going with us to Next Generation Wrestling's on Civil War Six, which is taking place at the end of August. PWO will be representing. All right, so get your tickets while you can, nextgentn.net. Um, also, uh, I believe we will be meeting up with Tony at Glory by Honor, which is in Philly at the old 2300 Arena. Um, so that would be a nice little um, event for us to get to. Um, Jeff Hitman Hall and myself will also be heading to Rampage in Pittsburgh at the beginning of August. So that'll be another exciting adventure for us to go on. Um, but you can catch us um, vlogging across the entire month of August. All right. So if you see less 
Um, referee's discretion, Alvarez versus Meltzer. You know why. We have to prep ourselves. We have to make sure we're physically, mentally ready for this. All right. But there is something that you can do in the meantime. You can like, share, and subscribe. And if you like the content you're watching, all right, you want to see more amazing content like that, head on over to Odyssey. The front man, D. White, has got some picking and winning on there. All right. Mm-hmm. Go on there. And if you like that, you like this, you like everything you're seeing, guys, it's Kofi.com. So it's PWO123. It's as easy as 123 for just the price of a cup of coffee a day. You can support us in producing outstanding content for you. That link is also in the description and on the splash page. Yeah, baby. It don't get no better than that. All right, boys. Well, it's time. I got to watch Keith Lee potentially win the WWE title. So. Yeah, baby. Are you about to ruin my dreams already? Yes. Uh, They changed it during the promo to a contenders challenge. So that means Keith Lee's probably winning. Well, my night's ruined. So hopefully he wins and then wins the title. That'd be great. (laughs) I'd pop. Um. The ruiner of days. But we need to go. It's time to roll. Love and appreciate you guys. Everybody stay safe this week. Hopefully we have this up uh, Tuesday morning for everyone to enjoy. We'll see you all Thursday for some live WrestleCast and, of course, everything else on the YouTube. So with that, I must bid you all adieu. Goodbye. Good night. Bang. For life.